Yay! I'm going to flash up the hydros, I put my glasses on, my gloves, my earplugs, two condoms. I got the mill set up to do a little run of ore. So here's the impact crusher. It's hydraulically driven and that feeds into the rod mill. It's got a classifier on the back side. So after the ore comes out of the classifier, the stuff that's the right size, say 100 mesh under, uh, gets pumped over to the concentrating table, the Wilfley table, and then it gets concentrated, and the oversize will get pumped back into the inlet of the impact mill. I used basically an Arduino, a, a microprocessor, and I programmed it to monitor the hydraulic pressure if the hydraulic pressure goes too high, it'll automatically reverse this solenoid valve to get it to clear the jam. So, I think it's pretty damn cool. I'll get it set up here with water and, and we'll run some more. This is the Texas Instruments launch pad that we're going to use to program this little chip here. This board's about 10 bucks. It's essentially an Arduino, but it's better than Arduino because you can take the chip out after you're done and put it in the board. There. You can do the same with the Arduino, but then you're screwed. You got to get another chip with a bootloader, a little piece of software on it, and you have to put that little piece of software on it. You need special widgets and this and that, friggin' farting around. The Texas Instruments though, you just buy these chips from Texas Instruments, you put them in this board, you program them, because they come pre-installed from the factory with the bootloader. These are better. Cheaper too, these chips are two bucks each, two two dollars and thirty cents each. Whereas an Arduino is, what, thirty bucks now? I've been pulling my hair out for freak's sakes trying to get this thing programmed. Come to find out, well, you know what a hassle these USBs are. All the pokey ends are different sizes, yada, yada, yada. So I bought this from Adafruit, figuring this would cover most of my bases. The fucking thing's only good for charging. So I've been trying to program with this thing for about 30 minutes now, tearing my hair out. Garbage. Garbage. Right, so we're ready to stick this in the circuit. Super easy to pull out, as you can see. <laughs> she ain't built for brutes. Anyway, I'll put this in the vise and rebend the pins, stick her in the circuit. 
This is what makes the magic happen. Now we wait. These guys aren't kidding at this stuff's nasty. Look at this. My nice Mac tools. Poking apparatus is all root. Blackered. Here's the board cleaned up with acetone. Ready for the most onerous part, which is drilling. You see the difference right away. It's smaller, lighter, faster. Hoping to shave a couple parsecs off the Kessel Run. On to drilling. Got the board all populated. Just missing one little terminal. Son of a bitch. I'm sure it's here somewhere. I right, got everything all cleaned up, ready to go, well organized. You, you can't do your best work unless it's organized. Oh, here. There we go. I'm going to steal it off this. I can't remember what I was using this for, so can't be important. Here it is. Tenth try is a charm. There we got the pressure switch. That'll indicate jams. We got the forward selector. Got the reverse selector. Then if it jams. So the pressure switch will make momentarily when the pressure spikes if it jams. And then there's a short delay so it goes into neutral and the pressure drops off. So it keeps trying to clear the jam. Going forward reverse. 